Hi, I'm Mark Gaylor. I'm a Sony Alpha Ambassador. Very excited to be announcing the version 5 firmware upgrade for the A9. So this uh, firmware upgrade makes a fabulous camera even better. It's going to be so much uh, easier for people who are not professional sports shooters to carry on tracking um, rapidly moving subjects with a greater deal of accuracy and also less likely to lose the subject. Uh, it's uh, first appeared on the A6400 camera and so some of these screenshots I'm about to be showing you are captured from the 6400 because I've only just installed the upgrade uh, on my own A9. Okay, so if you're going to install the upgrade, the first thing I would uh, strongly recommend is you keep a record of all of the custom settings on your camera, whether it be in my menu or the memory settings or the uh, recall custom hold, whatever it is, you need to make a record of that. Now, it is possible on cameras to um, reinstall the memories from a memory card uh, on the M1, M2, M3, M4 settings, but because of the firmware difference, it's not going to accept uh, any of your saved memories from a previous firmware version 4. So you do need to make a record of those. If you're unsure of what uh, settings to be customizing, just remember I outline all of my custom settings in my free ebook and there'll be a link to that below this movie. So rather than me talk to you about how to do an update, uh, Brian Smith, the Sony artisan in the USA, He's got a bulletproof guide to doing a firmware upgrade. So if this is your first time doing firmware upgrade, just uh, make sure you look at Brian Smith's uh, bulletproof uh, guide to upgrading your firmware. Mac users, please note that um, you will need to look at um, um, uh, working through the update setting tool first before you dive into the folder to get the system software update. It is a two-step process on the Macs. Uh, if you've got running High Sierra uh, or Mojave, then you're going to have to look at that uh, workflow. Just remember when you when the firmware upgrade is complete, it's going to basically think this is a brand new camera. Uh, quite exciting, but you will have to set up your date, your location, all of those preference. Nothing will be saved from the previous version. So the first thing you will possibly notice as you start diving into the menus is on page three of the first camera tab there, you're going to be looking at um, uh, an item below memory called select media. Now, that select media um, is typically there so we can choose which uh, memory card to draw the M1 to M4 settings from or save settings to a particular card. Now, it'll be set to memory um, uh, or slot 1 by default memory card in the lower slot but I typically change that to slot 2. Now you'll carry on recording images or movies to your slot 1 which is your prioritized media um, but I just like to um, save memories to the top card and I'll often keep um, a memory card in my bag with some saved settings on. I might switch it out for a higher capacity card um, if I'm trying to record onto that uh, second card um, but uh, I will tend to keep that second memory card in my camera bag. Just remember if you ever reformat that uh, memory card with your M1 to M4 settings, uh, those um, settings will be deleted. So it, it does make sort of sense to um, back those up onto your computer. I have a movie on that workflow called Total Recall, if that is a little bit confusing to you. Okay, let's get to the exciting stuff. The IAF is now on. It's often referred to as Evolved IAF. Uh, basically, it's going to be on in both AFS and also Continuous AF, which is AFC. Now, um, it, you are going to want to switch this off occasionally, um, and I'll talk to that uh, shortly. So, um, um, But it's great to have it on all the time without having to hold a custom button. And if the, uh, the camera ever loses uh, the eye, it'll just switch back to face detect, and you'll see it go from the small green box to the larger uh, green box as you're focusing. If it loses the face completely, if you've got one of the tracking options, it'll just uh, start tracking the pattern nearest um, to the face. Uh, typically uh, some aspect of the hair perhaps. The tracking is the next uh, obviously major thing, perhaps it is the major thing given that this is a sports action camera and that is that all of the lock-on AF options have been replaced with tracking versions. Now the, the options all look the same except they're called tracking not lock-on but it's a very different algorithm that now uses to follow your subject. 
pre previously what would often happen with the lock on options is that um, if um, it, it started worrying about whether it had the subject or not it could get uh, touchy and sort of jump to a completely unrelated object and I would advise sports shooters typically not to use the lock on unless you absolutely have to unless there was a risk that an obstacle would get in the way of your primary subject typically don't use the lock on but now we have the tracking variations uh, I will be recommending people use the tracking options as first port of call because because it's so much more reliable at staying on the subject. Um, these are images captured with the 6400. I have had like almost like a 100% success rate with the 6400 at tracking. Some of the reviewers in America who um, were first to test this camera didn't have, um, some of them didn't have great success. And I noticed on one of the reviewers' camera they didn't actually have uh, tracking selected, um, which just goes to show that even some professional reviewers can miss a setting, which is why I always encourage people to put uh, groups of settings into the memories so you don't accidentally overlook one of the settings so as long as you're in AFC continuous AF you've got an appropriate shutter speed and you've got one of the tracking um, um, options selected uh, the camera uh, if, and it should be better than the a6400 will give you uh, an exceedingly high hit rate of sharp images uh, to give you an example this was uh, tracking this hip-hop dancer who was jumping all around and then when he moves his arm into the field of view uh, rather than jumping to an eye on a nearby spectator it just uh, jumps to the nearest thing on the hip-hop dancer's head uh, which is typically a bit of pattern it might have been following as well. The AI algorithms that are using um, and tracking this um, are really working wonders with uh, sports action. Okay, so one thing about the, um, the AF areas is um, typically uh, I don't need to cycle through all of them. I still will change from maybe a wide to an expand flexible spot, maybe occasionally center or zone, but uh, I'm not going to go through every single option anymore. So if you've only got three or four options or maybe eight options that you want to cycle through, um, you can restrict or limit uh, what options that you want to cycle through. So basically what I've done is I've removed the small, medium, large spots on both of the um, the AF area and the tracking options so I don't have to move through those when I am deciding to quickly change. Uh, I'll have that on my C2 custom button which is the default. Just press C2, uh, wind uh, my front dial to wind through those different options but I don't have to wind through so many anymore. One of the things you'll first notice about this is how sticky um, the uh, the tracking options are. So objects can appear in front of your subject for quite a long period of time and the camera will track. If it's got a little bit of the subject um, still left behind the obstacle, generally it'll carry on tracking. And so you'll see that on my A6400 review and the A9 will be as good if not better. And uh, examples of that is um, this guy where somebody walks in front of the camera at um, an event, a parade, and uh, the only thing it's got left of the subject is a bit of his hat and his ear, and yet it carries on tracking the primary target regardless. We've got a couple of other smaller options which I should um, uh, just run through um, so you, you know they're there. Okay, uh, it's cir um, circulation of focus point. Typically, if you move the focus point all the way to the right and then you wanted to quickly come back to the left, you'd have to track that um, expand flexible spot all of the way from the right side of the screen to back to the left side of the screen. Now, if you switch this on uh, or you switch it to circulate, uh, when you roll it off the right hand edge, it will reappear on the left hand edge. That might be useful for some sports photographers at quickly moving um, when you're using that multi selector or joystick to move that AF point. That might save you a precious second or two when you're trying to move that AF point quickly. One of the th interesting things about um, when you go in to set up your custom keys is you're going to notice these uh, diagrams showing you exactly where the custom key is. Uh, I don't, I won't say this is the uh, this was essential, um, but it does make things uh, a little bit faster and easier to assign functions uh, to your custom buttons. Typically what a lot of photographers did prior to the version 5 update is often uh, photographers would assign IAF to the focus hold button on the barrel of the lens. Now a question arises now that uh, IAF is on all of the time. 
do I really need to keep that focus hold uh, button assigned to IAF because it still is an option and I would say yes I would either leave IAF on that button if that's what you've had already or maybe consider assigning um, a face registration or face priority to that button instead because there are some instances such as maybe motorsports where uh, maybe the driver or a rider is riding a, wearing a crash helmet uh, if uh, IAF is on um, and face detect is on, face priority is on, and there's a good face in the crowd which is very close to the primary subject, then it's going to jump to the crowd. So there are going to be some instances for sports photographers where they'll want to turn IAF off. Now you don't turn IAF off uh, specifically, that's not an option, you turn face uh, priority off and that in turn uh, turns the IA off as off as well. So occasionally if you want to quickly put it back on you can um, carry on using the focus hold button that you've assigned to IF or you could toggle between uh, face priority on and off uh, when you need to move between those two options. I'll probably have to do my focus area movie uh, again now we have these new options for the A9. If we go to the custom key, not, not this time on the uh, the shooting but on the playback, you'll see that we've got a couple of options here that you may miss um, and that is rating. Now we could previously lock or protect our files but now we can rate them with one to five stars. Typically I'm not going to be trawling through my own images, we're trying to uh, wonder whether it's a two star image or a three star. I'm just going to give it a star. Um, these stars will be seen by Lightroom and so it means that I can quickly uh, pull down to the images that I've already rated in camera without having to re-rate them. I think this is better than protect or lock because that you know, presents slight problems in um, for Lightroom with having files that are locked on the system. So I'm going to be switching to rating rather than protecting unless it's an, uh, an image on the camera that I definitely don't want to lose. You will um, assign a custom key um, for the rating. Um, you, it doesn't matter if that custom key is already assigned for shooting. Uh, basically, it will reassign itself to this new function if you're in playback. So it's possible to have multi functions on the same custom key. That's uh, moving forward. We have. Um, uh, when you go up to set up your function menu, instead of having lower six, upper six, and then having to assign things, you'll actually jump straight to um, the function uh, layout on the um, on the monitor. So again, um, it's not it's not something that's going to change the world, but it does make it faster and easier to work out what it is you're assigning, so there are no surprises. Uh, well, after you're signing everything, when you press that FN key, it's exactly where you remember you put it. Um, I would encourage you to um, maybe override at least half of the options in uh, the function key because a lot of them are superfluous to requirement because we've got hard buttons that do these operations. So it is worth spending a little bit of time um, going through there. And again, in my free ebook, I'll give you my uh, suggestions for what I've done on my A9. Something else that appeared on the A6400, which has also made its way in with version 5, is something called My Dial. Now you've got um, three dials, uh, the front dial, the rear dial and the control wheel on the back of the camera. Now these all do a specific task, you know, aperture, shutter speed, etc. Um, but you can, by assigning another custom key to um, My Dial, you can then choose, uh, you can switch the functionality of all three dials. Now you can have three sets of options for all of those dials. I can't actually th uh, think of three sets of things that I want to do with all of those dials. So I've typically just set one set of options and then I can cycle between that uh, first set um, or toggle between first set and the default settings for those three dials. Image jump settings. Um, I'll uh, visit the Im image jump settings now that I've set rating because I'm going to um, use, first of all, you select the dial that you're going to use, the jump. This means that when you're reviewing images, you don't have to go through every single image looking for the images that you've already rated. You can jump between viewing only the rated images. So you have to set a dial for that. I've nominated the front dial. If I start uh, reviewing the images using the rear 
grid, I'll, I'll look at every image. But if I've set the jump to um, to one star, and when I roll that front dial, I'll only see my one star ratings. So that is again is just a, a faster way of what if we are going to um, rate and review any particular images, it's just a faster way of showcasing our images, maybe to other photographers or at the end of the day, seeing what uh, the images we had rated. So this was, um, I, I really wanted this one to appear in a much earlier firmware. I've often been caught with uh, a memory card in between my teeth waiting for the first memory card slot to fill so I can uh, bung another one in uh, slot one. Um, generally what was happening with the A7 III and the A7R III, there's an option called auto switch media so that if I'm shooting a burst of images and the card is completely full it just automatically starts recording to um, slot 2 and now this is available on um, the A9 thank God um, because that is such a, uh, such the way that I want the, the the cameras to work if there is a lull in proceedings at some sort of event then I'll just uh, put the, um, the top card slot in the bottom uh, card slot prioritize that as my shooting media and then carry on shooting again Okay, so that uh, I think is an invaluable feature, almost as good as maybe the IAF, um, um, evolved IAF and the tracking features. Well, perhaps not, but it is certainly going to make my life a little bit easier when I'm shooting events. Okay, so just remember, uh, I probably haven't covered every single update. Um, I've only just installed the firmware update myself, but I was a little bit familiar with uh, a lot of these um, features that came in on the A6400, which got most of those first. Uh, really pleased to see them on the A9 because that is the camera I want to be shooting um, in, um, sporting events with. Um, 20 frames per second, zero blackout. How can you argue with the A9? Uh, but if you're um, if you're wanting to um, uh, set up uh, all of the A9 and see how I've set that up, just remember my free ebook, 200 page ebook. I'll put a link to that below this movie. Uh, there is also a donate button there. If it um, if you find this incredibly valuable, consider making a small donation so I can uh, carry on helping and supporting the Alpha community. If you head over to my website site markgaylor.com you'll see there is a section just on ebooks um, there are a number of ebooks for color management um, lightroom ebooks um, a lot of ebooks there that you can download um, for completely free um, in days gone old i used to write actual physical paper books and uh, publish them through focal press now i write ebooks and uh, i share them freely on my website and occasionally somebody who is very grateful makes a small donation okay so hopefully Hopefully you've um, found uh, the firmware update uh, interesting. Uh, good luck with the update and let me know how it goes, um, especially the tracking uh, options. Uh, hopefully that does increase your hit rate on the A9, making uh, the best camera even better. Okay, so uh, I'll catch you online next time.